So let's just get right into it. Hello, everyone. My name is Sophia Imieka. So let me help Mopolaji not to murder my surname. The surname is Imieka. And today, like Bolaji has said, we just want to share a little bit about um, what mutual funds are and how we can take advantage of them to grow our wealth. So I'm sharing my screen right now. If you can see me, if you can see the screen, just put a yes or a thumbs up in the chat so that I can know that you, you are seeing my screen. Okay, yes, 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 yes. Okay, great. So we can all see the screen. All right, so what are mutual funds? What are mutual funds and how do they work? For me, if you are a Nigerian or if you are an African, then you have an idea about what a mutual fund is. Why am I saying this? Africans were very communal, communal. Nigerians were very communal. So if you are a Nigerian, if you grew up in a Nigerian home, if you are a student, right, then you know what a mutual fund is. And why am I saying this? In our lives, when we were little, our parents used to put um, food. You know, when they put food in a plate and they say, everybody come and eat, right? Because we are communal. If you have done that in your life before, then you have an idea of what a mutual fund is. If you are a student, either you pass through um, secondary school, boarding house, or you're in the university, and you've ever had a situation where SAKBA was so much that you had to join do with your friends to eat something, then you know what a mutual fund is. And a typical example I like using is, you know when, um, for instance, there's SAKBA in school, at least a lot of what I saw people from UNN, I saw people from FUTO, right? So you guys understand what SAKBA is where everybody is hungry. And then somebody now says, okay, oh, let me donate uh, Gary. Another one says, let me donate uh, sugar. Another one says, I will donate the granite. And then we'll all come together and then do the sokis and we enjoy the sokis. Once you've done that in your life before, then you know what a mutual fund is. It's not that hard. So we'll just go straight into it. And for us in Lotus Capital, we have a very simple definition of mutual funds. We say a mutual fund is simply an investment vehicle that is made up of a pool of funds collected from many individuals for the purpose of investing in different instruments and assets. And then profits made from these investments are distributed back to the um, investors according to their contribution to the pool. So what does that mean? Let me go back to my example of when people come together to soak. So various investors contribute their funds into a large pool. And then a fund manager, for instance, Lotus Capital or any other fund manager, takes this pool of funds and then puts them into different asset classes, puts them into various investments. And then at the end of the day, the profits made from these investments are distributed back to the investors according to what they've contributed in the pool. So anybody that contributes higher, we get a higher return. Anybody that contributes lower, we get a lower return. Just the same way, you know, when you are drinking your, your gari, whoever brought the, the gari will have the largest share. Whoever just escorted, you know, maybe you escorted to go and get the cold water, but you didn't really put you know, a lot into the pool, you know, you get a smaller share. That's just what a mutual fund is all about. Now, for mutual funds, you could have retail investors like you and I investing into mutual funds, or you could have in institutional investors. And why do we have mutual funds? We have mutual funds simply to afford individual investors like you and I the opportunity to be able to invest in you know, big ticket transaction or big ticket stocks, you know, or big ticket investment instruments that you would not have otherwise had the opportunity to invest in. 
you know so that's just um a nutshell about how mutual funds uh, what mutual funds are and how they run now if we're looking at um the workings of mutual funds really like you know i've said in my other slides investors come together they pull their money and give it to a fund manager while why is does a fund manager come into this place a fund manager comes in here because the fund manager has the expertise on how to manage the funds professionally so just as you would always have that friend that will tell you that oh if you want your gary to rise or soak it for so so number of hours right or when we're in boarding school then you always have that friend that would say uh okay if you use this temperature of hot water to soak the indoor without cooking it on fire because cooking was contraband you know that's just how um the fund manager is the fund manager comes with the expertise to manage you know the funds deploy it into different asset classes so that you know they can generate returns these returns that are generated are now distributed back to the investors that mutual funds can be classified um simply into four main classes based on um where the funds are invested in or based on the um objectives of the funds now this is not um, a textbook classification it's just that when you look at um the investment um horizon in nigeria you find these four uh, major classes of mutual funds so yes if you're reading up about mutual funds you might find other classifications but these are the common the common ones we have around so we have equity funds equity funds are mutual funds that invest in stocks and securities uh, majorly then we have fixed income funds fixed income funds invest in fixed income instruments which are instruments that typically have um a maturity period where you receive back um, your principal and whatever has been accrued on it. And under fixed income funds, you have money markets um, funds, and then you have bond funds. The major difference between this is that for the money market funds, they invest in instruments that typically have maturities that are less than a year. And these are instruments like the treasury bills. While for the bond funds, are typically instruments that are over um, that have maturities that are over a year like the fgn maybe three year five year or seven year bonds then we also have um, balanced funds balanced funds are a mix of um asset classes you know so you could have a balanced fund that has maybe a mix of equity and fixed income funds or you can have a balanced fund that has a mix of um equities and then other type of asset classes maybe real estate or um or whatnot then we have um, another class of mutual funds that is well not very common in nigeria but i mean it's still it's still there they're called specialized funds where you have funds that are created by um, fund managers for specific industries so for instance on that here you can have things like infrastructure funds or REITs, you know or things like that so those are the um, four assets um, four types of uh, mutual funds that you uh, typically find in the nigerian investment space okay so now that you know what a mutual fund is and you know the type of um, mutual funds that um, we have. The next thing is to ask um, which mutual fund is right for me, right? Because when you go to the CarryWise platform, you see you see a lot of um, funds listed there. So how would I know which to go for, which is right for me? What should I be checking for when I'm going into mutual funds? Now, for you to invest in a mutual fund, there are three major things you should take into, into consideration. The first um, would be the funds you want to invest. What, what's the tenor? So for how long do you want to keep this money invested? 
right? That's the, the tenor of your, um, of your investment. So if you're looking for a long-term investment, you know how people say, I mean, I want to save for the rainy day or, or oh, I'm young, I want to just keep saving so that by the time um, I reach retirement age, I would have a very lovely nest egg that I can just use to enjoy my retirement. So if you have long-term goals, right, then you can be investing in equity funds or um, balanced funds, typically funds that are long-term in nature. But if you, your tenor is short to medium term, so for instance, you just have some money and you want to invest it before you know you would need it you probably would say um, need it in like uh, three months or six months and you know you don't want to um, tie it down for too long or you can't afford to tie the funds down for too long so those are short-term funds if you know that your um, funds are short-term then you should invest in maybe fixed income funds or things that uh, funds that you know that you can um, easily you know, pull out and you would have made some sort of profit from rather than going for equity funds that typically um, by their characteristics, they are long term in nature. Then um, the second thing you should be looking at if you are investing in mutual funds is what is your risk appetite, right? Are you a risk taker or are you risk averse? If you're a risk taker and man, you don't mind um, a little bit of risk and you know like they say in investing they had the risk they had the reward right so you want to go for you know something higher and you don't mind taking a bit of risk then you can go for the equity funds because like we said earlier equity funds invest in equities and we know that you know equities they could um they don't come with capital preservation so a, a bit of risk is involved when you're um, dealing in equities and in equity funds so you know you can go for equity funds or even you know a, a nice balanced fund that has you know equities in it but if you know that you are risk averse right if you are the type that after you've used the carry wise app your heart will be doing kikum 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 you know every three three minutes you'll be logging on to say is my money still there have I made profits? You know, if you know that you are like that, just chill mm? and then choose, yeah, invest in, you know, a fixed income fund. Because like we said, fixed income funds, they invest in things like bonds and, and money markets. So they don't um, carry um, the kind of risk that would be associated with equity funds. They are more, um, they are low risk. Yeah, let me put it that way. They are low risk. And um, they tend, some, not all, tend to give some sort of um, capital preservation. So, you know, your mind is at rest that, okay, I'm not investing in anything that is above my risk appetite. Then the last thing you should consider is your age and life cycle. So typically for younger people like you and I, you know, we can go for, um, funds that equity funds and balanced. <laughs> Somebody is saying, Am I young? Yes, so I'm young. Go, I'm a tapping babe. Young people like you and I, right? We can we can invest in uh, equity funds or, or balanced funds. So funds that you know are long term and then give us that opportunity to invest before we become um, older. You know, we'll be investing in um, for mutual funds that. You know, we are looking at it for the capital appreciation. They are sort of like aggressive. We can go aggressive and go for, you know, equity funds or growth funds as they are called. Well, if you are tending, you know, 40 and above, you are tending towards ret um, retirement, then you can um, go for the fixed income funds because at that um, point in time, you are looking to um, preserve you know what the wealth that you've created you're looking to to preserve it so you're not really going after so, an aggressive um, investment you are going for an investment that you just want to preserve it and probably get liquidity that will be paying you in your retirement so you go for fixed income funds now like i said these are just guides as to how you can um invest in various mutual funds however it depends on your personal circumstance you know so you might have 
a high risk appetite, but then the, the funds you have are short term funds. So in that um, kind of situation, you don't go for an equity fund because you have a high, a high risk appetite. You still need to go for something that is short term because you know that your funds are short term funds. So you have to look at it and consider your personal circumstance and how it um, affects you know, the kind of mutual fund that you will go for. You know, so in a nutshell, that's just a little about mutual funds. There's this proverb, Chinese proverb that I always like um, quoting that where they say that uh, the best time to, to start investing was 20 years ago. And the next best time is now, right? So if you've ever heard of the CarryWise app and you have not um, invested, you know, now is the time. Just go back, log into your app, go through the funds that you have there, and then start investing. It's as simple as that. So thank you very much. That's it for me. Uh, Mobology, back to you. Thank you so much, Sophia. Thanks a lot. Um, because of time, I will just, you know, introduce the next person, right? And then, you know, we will now take questions. I've already started noting the questions that you, you all have been putting in the chat box. Thank you so much. I can tell that, you know, you are here and you are listening, right? But because of time, I would move on. And then after the second speaker session, right, we will take questions, we will talk about, you know, lessons from Sophia's session and lessons from the next person session. So the next speaker is Emmanuel. Um, he is currently the primary port portfolio manager and head of portfolio management at United Capital Asset Management Limited the investment management business of United Capital PLC. He has several years of working experience that cuts across banking, wealth management, and investment management. He holds a bachelor's degree in agricultural economics from the Obafemi Awolowo University in Leife, um, as well as being a certified management consultant. He's also a fellow of the Institute of Management Consultant. So everyone, can you welcome Emmanuel? Welcome. All right, thank you very much, Mubola. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, it's actually nice to be here. And actually, fantastic presentation, Sophia, actually. I think she's basically made my job easy, having to lay a very um, good foundation for what I'm actually going to discuss. Um, I think as of now, everybody should actually be able to understand what the mutual fund is. And so it's going to be hard to actually convince everyone to actually invest in mutual funds uh, because that's what I'm actually going to be talking about. I would just like to share uh, my presentation. So we just guide while I speak. All right. So um, the first thing I'm saying, why should you consider investing in mutual funds is Nigerian? Um, I think. That has actually been done in terms of how laying the background because mutual funds are actually one of the best investments alternative for people who are trying to um, have their first exposure to investing. Uh, I think most of us are actually used to saving, um, having to save up either to buy something or save up just because we have a project or anything um, that we're actually looking forward to. But in terms of investing, investing is taking it one step further that the money you're in you're actually saving up. How can you actually earn a return on it? How can you actually grow your investment? Because um, we all know um, in terms of having to grow your investment, um, a particular principle comes into play, which is compound um, interest. Um, so when you invest, you basically invest to get a return or an interest on your investment. And you're actually looking to actually see how can you compound that to ensure that you can actually get to a profitable return at the end of the day. So for me, what I'll say is that mutual fund provides that vehicle whereby you can actually invest your funds and very good returns and also be able to ensure that what you're investing in is actually safe. And they're not like any pyramid scheme that you can invest your money today and tomorrow you can actually have a case of say an MMM or any of those such like um, pyramid scheme that we've seen that vanish into thin air. But for mutual funds have been around for quite a very long time, um, even around the world. I said that almost 20% of global investment assets are in mutual funds. So it shows you how much um, mutual funds are a key part to investing. So 
like I said, for most of us, we are used to saving, saving up for whatever we want to do, saving up for rent, saving up for whatever expense or whatever um, in terms of um, goal we're actually looking at. People saying, okay, death December is coming in December. How are we going to actually put up funds to actually ensure that uh, we're not left out in the um, partying and all the grouping? So everybody's used to investing for in, in terms of having to keep money aside, but when you consider it, you might actually not be doing yourself a service by putting your money away in a bank or putting it under your pillow or any of the saving boxes you might have. You might want to also ensure that, that your money is actually working for you. So which your funds provides that vehicle whereby your funds are not just lying I do, the funds are actually now your employees and they are working for you to actually generate returns for you. So what they are doing is that you've earned some money already, you kept them aside, this money you've earned and kept aside are now working for you to actually give you additional monies, which are not going to be considered as returns in this case. So let's try and move on to my next slide. I'll just try and give you a background of how um, the mutual fund industry have actually come so far from where we were previously to where we are today. Um, the mutual fund industry was not quite well known earlier on. Uh, most of the uh, mutual funds in Nigeria basically started out at the end of um the 80s to the early 90s, as we started having mutual funds coming out, just one or two here and there in most um, sophisticated um, finance houses. And for then, it was actually majorly HNIs, very sophisticated investors that were actually into um, mutual funds. They were not known, they were not something that you can basically just walk into or go online like you have today, you just go online and actually invest. Uh, in a mutual fund. Basically, just it was more like a very specialized, skewed investment product for the ultra wealthy individuals. So over the years, people have considered how they can invest and see what are the alternatives to invest in. Because personally, um, people are not investing in mutual funds, whether they invest directly in securities like um, treasury bills or invest in the equities market. So I got actually the main um, investment vehicle for most individuals in the early 90s because the market was doing pretty much very well and uh, most people were putting their money there all year in year out until we got to the end of um or how I put it the end of the 90s towards um mid um 2000 2009 when we had financial crisis and so what's mutual fund just to say that in this point that what mutual fund been able to do is to actually ensure your funds are actually invested by a professional fund manager, as Sophia had mentioned. So what we had previously, people were just investing in different assets. They didn't know why they were investing. There was a head mentality. So okay, everybody's buying stocks. Stock was the in thing. Let's buy stocks also. We will say, okay, uh, what are they buying now? People are buying bonds. Let's buy bonds. So we didn't understand why they needed to invest. What were the things that needed to be done before you invest in any assets? How are you sure that this Basic assets meet your risk appetite, doesn't meet your investment horizon. All these were not done. So we're just putting money where everybody's putting money, just follow the trend. And when the market turned, when we had the financial crisis, a lot of people got their fingers bonds. And the question now came like, okay, how can we actually invest our money with people who are actually professionals, who can actually guide us and ensure that we are not just investing in instruments we don't understand, instruments we don't know, instruments we don't even want? Because for a portfolio, a fund manager, yeah, core responsibility on a daily basis was to actually ensure that your funds are actually generating the best returns and are being put in the best assets that will actually meet your need. So at that point, we started seeing a renewed interest in the mutual fund space. And as I mentioned previously, mutual funds are actually an HNI thing. So we saw minimum entry um, amounts there was about 100,000 for most uh, mutual funds of 50,000 at best. But now, so today, you have mutual funds as low as 1,000 for you to actually invest. So that 1,000, you might want to use to buy data, you might want to use to do whatever it is. You can always just save it into a mutual fund and ensure that you have any interest on your investment because leaving your money, I do with the banks. The banks are actually making money from your money, lying um, in your bank accounts, your savings accounts, and getting ridiculous rates. But when you now invest in mutual funds, you see the kind of rates you'll be getting. And I'll go into the reasons why we can actually have to invest in mutual funds, especially as we have an economy that is actually quite struggling in Nigeria. And as we as Nigerians, what are the opportunities that are available for us um, in the mutual fund space? So 
Just to wrap up on this growth of mutual funds, over the years, due to that renewed interest in investing, we've seen a significant growth um, in the mutual fund space. We now have over 100 mutual funds in Nigeria from different type of mutual funds that Sophia has actually mentioned earlier on. We have different arrays of mutual funds by different houses. And to try to know that the total size in terms of the um, asset under management for the mutual fund industry has grown as high as over 1.3 trillion era currently. So that's actually a huge volume showing that people are actually investing in mutual funds. It's actually nothing that is actually, um, um, how I put it, strange or something that's exclusive to some certain individuals. Today, it's open door. Most um, mutual funds can go online, download their apps, and actually invest from the comfort of your bedroom. So it's now democratized. It's now open to everybody. And that actually spawned a lot of growth we've seen in the mutual fund industry. So right now, the mutual fund industry is actually seeing a lot of growth because people are actually looking at how can I actually make money? How can I stop leaving my money in the banks for people to actually give out my money for um, investment and just give me very little or no return on my investment? So why not put my money in the mutual funds? And because of the technology we have today, it's quite seamless to get your money out and also top up on your investment. So why will I put my money in the bank when I can actually put it in a mutual fund? So those are what we've seen that actually support the growth of the mutual fund industry. And so I'll come to the reasons why to invest in a mutual fund. Why should you invest in a mutual fund? Like I said, the mutual funds are actually managed by professionals, fund managers. So it as little as one thousand, the professional is managing your one thousand. It's it's that, that just gives you an idea of what it is. So why you want you can't say your money is too small. No matter how small it is, as little as one thousand, you can actually have a professional who's going to manage your money and ensure you're getting competitive returns uh, on your investment. So let's go to the next slide that talks about different reasons why we should actually invest and in a mutual fund so one managing inflation inflation today is at 17.01 percent meaning that if you're earning the same amount you were earning last year you actually in reasons of it you've actually lost about 17 percent of that amount so you're earning 70 percent less than what you were earning last year even if um, you're earning the same amount as of today so when you invest in a mutual fund it's always able to give you a return that actually compensates you for the inflation you're actually seeing, because in terms of inflation, it reduces the value of the currency. So when you're getting returns, that basically helps augment the losses you are getting from um, inflation. Another thing is devaluation also. We we'll see how the Naira has moved in the last couple of weeks to very high rates as we stand today. If you invest your dollar mutual funds, so it gives you a opportunity that, you know what, I can actually put my money in dollars, but not in the bank, but in a mutual fund. So why? The Naira is getting devalued. I'm any more on that side. And I'm also any additional interest on my investment. So it's a win-win for you. When there's devaluation, your, your, your investment in dollars is actually becoming more valuable. When inflation is hitting you, you are still being um, shielded by your investments in foreign currency. So you have mutual funds that are dominated in um, dollars that you can actually invest your funds in and also preserve your money from um, inflation and devaluation. Then I mentioned is the expertise by the fund managers. They're able to invest your money because prior to now, for you to actually get um, an expert to manage your funds, even as of today, except you're investing in a mutual fund, you want to open a private investment account in most of these um, asset management firms. You need as minimum as 50 million to 100 million to actually open such uh, accounts where you have an investment manager managing your investment. But a mutual fund is actually open-ended, whereby anybody can put in their funds at any point in time or withdraw their funds at any point in time. And those investments are managed by professionals. So you are getting the benefit that was an exclusive right to HNIs and ultra world individuals previously. So you are getting that expertise in terms of management of your funds for at least as 1,000 euros. So why not just invest your money there? Convenience, like I said, the technology we have today are actually very fantastic that from the comfort of your home, you can actually invest in a mutual fund, make redemptions that can actually hit your account same day or next day value. So why put my money in the bank when I can get my money from the mutual fund at any point in time I want? It's economical. You don't need to spend much to invest in the mutual funds. The fees on mutual funds on an average are about 1.5%. So why, and that's, um, um, a net of the returns you are getting. So that's not the returns you are getting, they're not nobody's coming to charge you on that. Those fees are already factored into the returns you are getting. So if 
you are seeing a money market fund that is returning about 9%. 9% is already factoring those fees already. So you are getting 9% already of that. Diversification. When you invest in mutual funds, the four money has invested your funds in different assets. If you're going to go to the market to invest by yourself, you buy maybe just one security based on the volume you have, just one security or just one bond, one treasury bill. But because you're investing in a pool that has different securities already in that pool, you have your risk spread across different asset classes that diversifies your investment. So you're really not just skewed to a particular asset class, say you're holding only equities or you're holding only treasury bills, you're holding only bonds. It's spread across depending on the type of mutual funds you're investing in. Liquidity, like I mentioned, you're able to get your money as soon as possible. These things are actually instant. Nowadays, you can even, once you are doing it, your bank account is already credited, being credited already. So why do you want to actually convenience yourself when these funds are as liquid as you can, you can get? Because any point in time, you're ready to get your funds out. You're getting your money credited to your bank account. High returns, better than what you can get from fixed deposit or putting your money in a savings account. You can get substantial returns that are quite competitive in a mutual fund. So why not invest in mutual fund? But like I said, they are safe and transparent because they are regulated, highly regulated, and they're actually able to publish their fact sheets and other documents that details everything that happens on the fund on a monthly to a quarterly basis, depending on the type of mutual funds you're invested in. So this basically does give a summary of why we should invest in the mutual funds. When you consider what's happening, how people are putting their funds in other kind of schemes that might not be regulated and they are losing their funds today year an FBA Forex comes down, tomorrow year another XYZ has actually come down. Why do you want to expose yourself to such risky investment when you can actually invest in mutual funds, get all these benefits, money by professional fund manager, get your money as at when you diversification of your investment, they are safe, they are also things that actually protect you against inflation and devaluation. So when you consider all these, you ask yourself, why do you want to be going to investment houses that are not known, they're not regulated by any regulatory body. People are actually swindling everyone. Like I said, we had many pyramids come down. Why do you want to expose yourself to such when you can actually invest in a mutual fund that's actually safe, is secure, is liquid, gives you high return, is transparent, is regulated? When you consider all this, to me, I'm looking at myself and asking, is there any reason why I shouldn't invest in a mutual fund? I don't know about you, but for me, mutual funds are the best bets I will actually put my money in because they provide me convenience, provide me expertise investing by fund managers who I might not be able to pay because uh, of the volume of um, amounts I have. But with 1,000 error, I can actually invest in most of the mutual funds and get very good returns that I might not get except I have huge volumes um, as a high net worth individual. So um, this just gives you a sample of kind of mutual funds offerings we basically have in, I say, uh, capital asset management. We have different bouquet, just like um, Sophia has mentioned, there are different types of mutual funds depending on your risk appetite, depending on your age. You look at, okay, do I want to invest for low risk investment or high risk investment? Do I want to invest in equity kind of investment? Or do I want to invest in more fixed income investment? So we have the equity fund that actually for investors who are looking to drive um, investments in equities, but they don't want to invest directly in the market. They want a fund manager to invest their funds and invest in equities. You have a balanced fund that basically has a mix of both equities and fixed income that gives you a return that's actually more skewed towards both asset classes. We have a fixed income fund that is actually for fixed income investors who basically want low risk investments. You have a wealth for women fund that considers um, gender empowerment and ensure equality of this. So money market fund also for clients who are looking to invest in money market funds are very liquid 30 days holding period. Or like I mentioned, a euro bond fund that is actually dollar dominated, where you want to invest your dollar investment or your dollar um, cash that is still idle in your domiciliary account. A euro bond fund gives you that alternative. Or are you someone who basically wants to invest in line with your faith and your belief as um, a Muslim or as an ethical person? There's a scoop fund that's available for you to also invest your fund and get returns that are actually in line with Sharia principles and also that will not ensure that you're actually breaching your face by any interest um, in investments that you want to put your. So all these are just kind of the case we have in terms of um, mutual fund on, um, offerings. So this just gives you real life examples of mutual fund offerings that are available to investors at every point in time. And all these, like I said, 
they are managed and regulated by the Securities and Exchange Commission, which is a regulatory body that oversees uh, investments um, in Nigeria. And you also get very good returns. Dividends are paid on this mutual fund also. And your returns are tax-free and you also get dividend payments like I mentioned earlier on. So I think this brings me to the end of my presentation. Uh, I think at this point, we'll be looking to see if there are questions and actually see how we can provide the answers to it. So over to you, Mabalaji. Thank you so much. Thank you. That was really enlightening. Um, you know, questions were just dropping <laughs> while you were speaking. So thanks a lot, Emmanuel. We have quite a number of questions. And because of time, I'm actually not sure that we can take everything. Yes, please tell Emmanuel, thank you. Thank you in the chat box, right? Um, <laughs> okay, please let me just start going through the questions. Um, Okay, so Emmanuel and Sophia, it's time to take the questions. <laughs> and they are quite, you know, we have like 15 here. So if maybe like in one minute or two, you can help us to answer the questions that people have, you know, put in the chat box, that would be very, very helpful. If you still have questions, now is the time. Hopefully we'll be able to get to them. But the first one is, um, are mutual funds same as bonds? Emmanuel, if you can please answer that. Are mutual funds the same as bonds? All right, thank you very much for that. Uh, mutual funds are not the same as bonds. Uh, mutual funds, basically, depending on the investment or depending on the mutual fund you're investing in, um, you can actually have a bond fund. So you have examples, there are some bond funds in the market that invest in bonds. So. If you're investing in bond, you're investing directly in the security, which is bonds. Now for the mutual fund, what the mutual fund does is pull investors funds together and now invest in different securities. So if you had gone to the market to buy a bond yourself, you'd have just bought maybe just one or two bonds. But now if you invest in a mutual fund, which is like a, a bond fund, what it does is that it invests in several bonds in the market. So what it gives you, it gives you that diversification to ensure that you're not just only exposed to only one particular bond, or you have exposure to different bonds across different maturities, across different tenors, across different types of whether corporate, FGN, like that. So that's the beauty of, about mutual funds. They basically are a cocktail that can actually give you um, a serving of different investments in just one um, um, serving. So if you are buying bonds, you're buying security directly. If you're investing in mutual funds, you're investing in a vehicle that invests in bonds. So I don't know if that clarifies that. Okay. Um, I, I'm already feeling like we might have to have like a different session for just question and answers of mutual funds because there are so many. Um, Sophia, if you can please, so I've seen a couple of people put in the chat, chat box, can you lose money with, <laughs> when you invest in mutual funds, can you lose money? Sophia, if you can please answer this question. Okay, thank you for that. When you invest in a mutual fund, can you lose money? Well, my answer to that is going to be yes and no. The reason why I'm saying yes and no is because when I was talking about what to look out for when investing in mutual funds, I gave some guidelines. So if you invest in the right mutual fund for yourself, it's very, the likelihood of you losing money is very, very low, right? But if you if there's a mismatch, if you invest in a mutual fund that is not suitable for your personal circumstance, then you could lose your funds. And what do I mean by that? I gave an example. For instance, if you know that the fund you have is short-term funds, like you want to use the funds to pay your school fees in three months' time, and then you take that fund and you invest it in an equity mutual fund, which typically is long term. And then you come back in three months that you want to withdraw. Yes, you might likely um, take a hit because equity funds are long term. You should be in it for the long haul, right? But if you invest in a short term you know, um, instrument like a, a fixed income fund, for instance, then you wouldn't lose fund. So 
yes and no. You just have to be very clear as to your personal circumstance and as to the right kind of mutual fund for yourself so that you don't lose your funds. I totally, I totally agree, right? So I'm, I'm putting a link in the chat box now. I don't know if, yes. So I've just put a link, um, carrywise.com slash risk assessment. When you want to start investing, right? It is so, so important to know the kind of investor that you are. This is where you should even start. And that's why we have like a risk assessment, um, you know, sort of like simple questions that you can answer, right? That gives you an idea of the kind of investor that you are. That will tell you, okay, I'm currently at a level where I'm a conservative investor. So I'm that person that if I put my money in, I don't want to hear stories. I don't want to, you know, I want to see the capital and I want to earn whatever it is that you have showed me. Then for people who have like higher risk appetites, right? There are people that they don't mind if the market is doing, they call, <laughs> some people call the market lag badger market, right? So they don't mind if the market is doing lag badger sometimes. They are willing to stay and like stay, you know, for the long term. Those people would be classified as, you know, high risk investors. They don't mind, right, to wait for years, right, for their money to multiply if i can put it that way so this is the first place this is where you should start if you've not taken it please if you can see that link can you just put yes in the chat box if you can see that link can you put yes in the chat box awesome so please ensure you click that link and you know take the assessment and find out it's so important to find out more about yourself right especially in you know in a market like nigeria where you're hearing stories you know today tomorrow different things coming up in the investment space you want to know the kind of investor you are that should then guide you on the kind of investments to make right so let's just see if we can take a few more questions like time is just running um Mm, which one which one can you liquidate anytime the answer is yes um yes that's if you know again going back to what sophia has been saying about thinking long term if you know that's if you are someone who is thinking long term then you don't want to just liquidate anytime right you want to put your money in for the long term but you can liquidate your mutual funds at any time what is ethical fund emmanuel if you can please answer that all right, thank you very much. Um, for the ethical fund, uh, it's actually skewed to investors that want to ensure that um, their funds are invested in line with their ethical values. So you, you'll see that for the ethical funds, you don't invest in breweries, you don't invest in um, stocks of um, alcoholic um, companies, you don't invest in anything that has to do with, um, we don't have that in Nigeria, but generally when you talk about your ethical fund, so, you don't have investments in um, Amoris, companies that actually deal in arms, um, just generally like that. So it's more skewed towards um, investment that are in line with principles of being ethical. So um, like also the Shara kind of um, investment is a type of ethical fund, um, but it's actually more restrictive than the general ethical fund. So it ensures that um, even banks are not included in investments in, um, the share kind of fund. Now, why is that? Because banks are actually into the interest business and interest is actually considered as uh, haram in um, Islamic principles. So it's actually, like I mentioned, the Sharia compliance funds are type of ethical investment that they also call faith-based investments or faith-based um, funds. So they're actually in line with the kind of um, faith that the individual would want to. So most people will not invest in a Guinness or a Nigerian Bureau normally. So why should I give my money to a mutual fund fund manager and he takes that same fund and invests in such kind of um, investment outlets? So stocks like um, Guinness, Nigerian Bridge that are actually alcoholic um, brands would not be invested in. So it's actually a very clean, green kind of um, investments that are actually in those funds. That's what ethical funds are. They're actually fit base and are invested in line with ethical principles. Like I mentioned, you can do stuff like um, companies are uh, into either um, guns, Amori, and such like. So those are against some ethical values. So companies that actually have some ethical values are the companies that 
are focused on when it comes to investing for ethical type um, investment or ethical type funds. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, Sophia, please, can you elaborate on why TD returns year to date? So somebody asked that question. Can you please elaborate in a few minutes what that means? Okay, year to date returns just simply means um, the profit that has been accrued. So for us that are in the um, ethical space, like Lotus Capital, we use the word profit. Year to date is the returns you've accrued. For instance, if you invested, um, you came in in, in January, or um, let's say from January till date, what return has the fund generated? That's what year to date means, simply put, right? Then for um, other fund managers that um, are in the interest space, it's just from the beginning of the year to date, what interest has accrued to your your investment. That's what year to date means in simple terms. Okay, thank you. So essentially, you know, how that um, fund has performed from the beginning of the year, right, till the time that you are seeing, you know, whatever percentage or interest rates, sorry, that you see, you know, on carry wise. So um, we like to stick to time. We still have over 10 questions, right? I'm thinking that we should organize another webinar, right? Where we just come, you sit with, it's like you're sitting with us and you are asking all your questions about mutual funds. If this is something that you think you'll be interested in, can you just put yes in the chat box? Okay, I can say yes, please already, because, you know, if we have to take sessions, and I take questions. I can imagine how much time we would have to spend here. Okay. It's good to know that you would, you know, like to have that kind of session. So, you know, we would think through the best date and then send an email. Awesome. Awesome. I can see a lot of yes. Right. So we'll send an email. Please make sure that if you get the email, be on the lookout, right, for the email. And then when you get it, actually register for that session where you just come and sit with the Carry Wise team, right? And you just ask questions about mutual funds. That way we can break everything down, right? It will really, really help. I think that would help. So I would speak with the team about that but you know um again can we just say before we end say thank you to emmanuel say thank you to sophia can you say thank you in the chat box thank you so much for making the time to be here